This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, there, hello, there, it's Jack Pettigrew, and welcome you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, November the 28th, is a goalie who is now on his third NHL franchise. He's been an iconic goalie for two, his other two teams. And all of that. He played for the Penguins and the Golden Knights before now playing for the Chicago Blackhawks. He is Mark Andre Fleury, the Flower, as they call him. He's 37 today. He's still playing in the NHL, and he's older than I am. Be born in 1984. Uh. Mark Andre Fleury would play in the Quebec Junior League for the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. That still exists to this day. So he did very well for himself. He got a silver at the World Juniors. In 2003, and Quebec te second team All Star. He was chosen first overall by the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Penguins got the pick because Florida was supposed to pick first, but they, the Penguins wanted Flurry and traded and traded their third pick and the 55th pick alongside Nico Samuelson to Florida to get the first and second third pick. So Flurry became the third goalie to be chosen number one in the NHL draft. After Michel Plass in 1968 by the Canadiens and Rick DiPietro in 1990, no, 2000s with the Islanders. It was amazing what he did for Cape Breton and all that. So, yeah, I don't think, I think Florida did pretty well. Everyone knows that. The 2003 NHL draft was stacked. I mean, when you got people like Mark Andre Fleur, Eric Stahl, Nathan Horton, who Florida took with that third overall pick, which wasn't bad, Nikolai Sherdev, Thomas Fanick, Ryan Sitter, Dion Phaneuf, Jeff Carter, Dustin Brown, Brent Seabrook, Zach Parise, Ryan Getzlaff, Brett Burns, Ryan Kessler, Mike Richards, Brian Boyle, Corey Perry. In the first round, you know it's a Gigantic draft. Anyway, Fleury would actually play in the NHL at 18 years old. He played against the LA Kings, but lost 3-0. By his next start, he beat the Red Wings. Fleury would share time with J.S. O'Ban and Sebastian Caron, which is weird because Pittsburgh having three French-Canadian goaltenders at the same time, that's got to be like hard to believe. If you're a Montreal fan, it's like, yo, know, that's understandable. But if you're a Penguins fan, why are the French Canadian goalies? Kind of weird. He looked good, but unfortunately, Pittsburgh had terrible defense and all that. And then Pittsburgh said, you know what? He should go to the uh, to World Juniors in 2004. And he did. He played for Canada and did well. Unfortunately, we all know about that Braden Coburn terrible. The, I mean, the, that terrible clearing pass from Marc-Andre Fleury that bounced off Braden Colburn into the net, giving the Americans the gold medal, not Canada. He was sent back to the Quebec League in 2004. It was basically that Fleury's contract bonus was a factor for him to go to Cape Breton. And remember, Pittsburgh was really in financial trouble at that time. Fleury would play for Cape Breton and all that, and was given a chance to play for the AHL's Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins after the Quebec League ended. Fleury would be in the AHL after the NHL had that labor dispute. Once he, once initial play resumed, he was in the well, he was in the minors, but then he was replacing an injured Jocelyn Tebow. Man, what was with Pittsburgh and French Canadian goalies at that time? Anyway. He would switch on and off from AAA, I mean AAA, ugh, from the AHL to the NHL and all that. It was terrible. The Penguins gave up 316 goals despite having one, despite having Mario Lemieux and Sidney Crosby on the team. Fleury would compete with Sebastian Caron and Thibault for the starting goalie. Like I said, 
Why the French Canadian goaltending? Thanks. Anyhow, Fleury would do much better in a sense. He actually ended up winning his 40th game for the Penguins in 2007, like 40th win in the season. Only the second goalie in Penguins history to do that. The other goalie, Tom Brasso. But he would break Johan Hedberg's record for most games and minutes played. So, yeah, so he played a lot of games for them. Fleury would make the playoffs for the first time facing the Ottawa Senators, but the Senators beat them in five. Fleury did fantastic in 2008, getting the Penguins to the Stanley Cup Finals. Anyway, he looked good. So the Penguins and Red Wings fought two for nail. All that. He had a good game. He was 12-2 and two in the playoffs. No, sorry. He was. He got the Penguins to be 12-2 and two on the route to the Red Wings. Face the Red Wings. But the Red Wings won game six. And, of course, the Red Wings won the Cup. So Fleury did get a new seven-year deal after that season. With a 35-win season in 2009, he helped the Penguins get to the Stanley Cup Finals yet again to take on the Red Wings. But this time, the Penguins changed the narrative. After losing to Detroit in, in six games, they beat the Red Wings. Although in Game 7, I mean, Fleury made a couple of huge saves in the final five seconds of Game 7. Sandberg had a chance to score, and Nick Lidstrom had a chance. But Fleury dove to save the puck and give the Penguins the Stanley Cup. Great job by him. Fleury would get another 37-win season in 2010, helping the Penguins finish fourth in the Eastern Conference, but were shocked by Montreal in round two and in the repeat chances. Marc-Andre Fleury looked hot in all that. Unfortunately, in 2013, Fleury had a bit of a drought. Even though the Penguins moved on, they decided to move forward with Thomas Foucault Thomas Foucault to play the remainder of the 2013 playoffs. And Boston swept the Penguins in the conference finals. But they still think that Fleury looked pretty good and all that. Mark andre Fleury looked good. In 2014, he recorded his 300 eventual win, becoming the third youngest and the third fastest to hit that mark. And all that. 2016 was when things started to fall flat, in a sense. Fleury would have a good second half of the season once new coach Mike Sullivan came in. But he would have a season-ending concussion. With Matt Murray... In the net, the Penguins qualified for the playoffs. Fleury couldn't play in the Stanley Cup playoffs because of his post-concussion syndrome, but he got back in net for Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Final. He subbed in for Murray, and he started Game 5, which the Penguins lost in overtime, and then they decided to go with Matt Murray for the remainder of the season, for the series. Getting the, the Stanley Cup was won with Matt Murray in net and not Marc-Andre Fleury. Fleury would only play 38 games in the 2017 season, winning 18 of them. Not good. But Matt Murray got injured before the playoffs against Columbus, so Fleury had to come in and did well in all that. They took care of the Blue Jackets, and the Penguins beat the Caps in Game 7 of the second round and would face Ottawa in the conference finals. After a Game 3 disaster, they decided to go with Matt Murray the rest of the way for the Stanley Cup. So Fleury won his third Stanley Cup, but second being the backup goalie. The writing was on the wall with Matt Murray being emerging in net. Ironically enough, Matt Murray's now on waivers. Ottawa put him on waivers. But anyway, Fleury decided to waive his no-trade claw and no-movement clause to be left exposed. And Vegas decided to pick him up in the Expansion draft. The Penguins also traded their second round pick in the 2020 entry draft as an incentive for Vegas to select Flurry in order for the team to be relieved of a $6 million cap hit. 
And the Golden Knights' first game was against Dallas, which he helped them win 2-1. to one. Unfortunately, he had a knee to the head a couple days later. It was put on long-term injury reserve. Anyway, Fleury would get his 400th career win. And we'll be good. Fleury started for the Knights in the first round of the 2018 Stanley Cup playoffs. The Knights swept the first round against the LA Kings. The Knights then took care of San Jose in six. And then, of course, Fleury beat, beat Winnipeg in the conference finals. Mark andre Fleury was in net for all five games of the Stanley Cup final against the Washington Capitals, but unfortunately Washington just wanted it more. Fleury would resign with the Knights on a three-year deal. He looked pretty good for that. Unfortunately for Fleury, Game 7 of the first round series in 2019 against the Sharks would be huge. Vegas was looking good. They were up 3 nothing, and then a controversial five-minute penalty for Cody Eakin who cross-tracked Joe Pavelski. On that five-minute power play, San Jose would score four goals, and the Sharks would win that game. They couldn't find they couldn't find a good backup for Fleury in 2020, so they had to keep him playing. But the Vegas, but Vegas would trade for Robert Leonard, Robin Leonard, and Fleury and Leonard would be a tandem. He was basically Leonard's backup as the Golden Knights went to the conference finals, losing to Dallas. And Fleury bounced back. He was actually given the Vezina Trophy and for his performances. So he's the defending Vezina winner, yet he's in Chicago. Why? I don't know. But anyhow, the Golden Knights needed salary cap space. So they decided to, so Vegas decided to trade Flurry to Chicago for a minor league forward, making Flurry the first goalie since Don McCashick to be traded as the defending Fezina Trophy winner. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. Hashik was dealt as the defending winner? Hmm. Anyway, Flurry was not notified by Vegas, and he learned about it on Twitter. So he, he, cont he contemplated, contemplated, he contemplated retirement. But Fleury decided to stick with his guns to play for Chicago. And unfortunately, Chicago hasn't really done too well. Fleury, of course, did a decent job in all that. He did win the gold medal. He did win a gold medal for Canada at the 2010 Winter Olympics. But the goaltending duties were split between Berdur, Martin Berdur and Roberto Luongo. He was the third goalie, so he got a gold medal still. So, yeah, Fleury would marry his longtime girlfriend in 2012, and they have two daughters and a son. So, Fleury doing his job. So, he has 492 career wins heading into the 2022 season. So, if he gets eight of them, he gets the 500. That's hard to do. Only Berdur and Wall have ever done that. Get to 500 career wins. That's amazing. He's the third winningest goalie in NHL history right now. The playoffs, he's won 90 of games. Well, how many shutouts have he had? He's had 67 shutouts in 2020 in his career and 16 in the playoffs so far. So, yeah, he's won three Stanley Cups, been to five All Star games, won the Fezna in 2021, which is amazing at age 36, at age 36 winning the. That's a nut trophy. That's pretty impressive, don't you think? I think that he's very underrated. That's how I feel, and that's the way you should all feel, too. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.